It is currently daytime. If that's true, I want to go outside and exercise. If that's false, I want to go to bed. That's what's called a Boolean condition, a condition that can be either true or false. And when you're programming that cool game or app or website idea that you have, sometimes you'll want to check for a condition and perform one action if that condition is true and a different action if the condition is false. For example, as you can see, we have here a rectangle that moves and then disappears on the right side. What if I would like to check the position of the rectangle so that if the position of the rectangle passes a certain point that I will define, then I want the direction of the movement to be the opposite so that the rectangle basically bounces and goes to the other side. And then when it's reaching the other side, I would also like to check to see if it reaches a certain point and if it reaches that point, then I also want it to bounce. So basically what we'll implement in this lesson is a bouncing rectangle. And for that, we will use the if statement and also else if, and we'll talk about else statements too. So let's take a look at the code. We have the code here of a basic moving rectangle. We have our canvas and we define some initial position for the rectangle, the dimensions, of this rectangle a speed and we grab the canvas and the context so so that we can draw on it then we have the step method which gets called multiple times per second and in the step method we have two methods one that takes care of updating the position of the elements and the other one that takes care of drawing of cl clearing the canvas and drawing the elements so it is an update where we actually want to carry out these checks because this is where we're carrying out where we're doing all the position updating and all, all the logic or the, or the physics um, behind the, the simulation that we're trying to do. If statements allow us then to check for a condition, what condition would we like to take to check for? We want to check that if x is greater than 270, this is 300, um, 300 width, y, if, the, if x is greater than 270, we want to reverse the movement. So I'm going to implement that. If, and then the condition, x is greater or equal than 270, if that's true, then whatever I'm putting in here will be executed. What is it that we want? Well, first of all, if we cross this, this if we pass that number, if we're, say, 280 for some reason, we just want it to be pushed back to that limit. So we are forcing it to be on that limit. And then we want the direction of the movement to change, for which we can simply say that speed is now minus speed. So instead of adding, instead of adding pixels, we are now subtracting pixels. Let's take a look and see if this works. So you can see now, once we, once we reach that, that point, we reverse the speed. And we also want to check what happens when it reaches this point? So if x is less or equal than 10, that's the location that, that I've defined, then x will be equal to 10 and speed will again be reversed. So let's, let's check this, see if it actually works. So there's one issue here. So if I'm, if this is true, then I don't really want this to be tested because I already know what's happening. And why would, it, why would we have to text, uh, test this condition again? That's where else statements can be used. So if we type in else if, this only gets checked if this is false. So if this is true, then we go with this part. And this doesn't get checked. If this is false, then this gets checked. And if this is true, we will execute this code here. You could have more else if um, statements, just like so. You have more of them. And you can also define a default case. So what happens if all of them are, f are false, none of them are true? You can have an else statement at the very end. And that will be basically a default behavior. So in this case, else will be whenever the rectangle is not on the two edges. But we don't want anything particular to happen there, but that's what we do. So to summarize what we're doing, what we've done here, we've talked about 
Boolean conditions that can be either true or false. So this statement here can be true or can be false. An if statement allows us to carry out a certain action if the condition is true. If the condition is false, then we can move on to else if, and then we can have multiple else ifs. And if none of them are true, we can also have an else statement at the very end.